In this video, we're going to go over everything you need to know about the CRM application. We are in a 16.3 environment with a new UI, but everything I'm going to show going forward should exist in all 16 plus environments. So let's go into our CRM app. We're in a new environment with demo data loaded so that we have some data to work with. As soon as you click into the CRM app, you're going to see your pipeline. So you'll see all of the opportunities in this Kanban view sorted by the particular stage that those opportunities are in. You'll notice at the top in our search bar, we have a default filter that says my pipeline, and this is the default filter that Odoo creates for us. Now, before we go too deeply into our pipeline and managing our opportunities, let's go into our settings and take a look at some of the different configurations. So I'm going to click on configurations here and we'll go into settings. The first thing I want to look at is the subheader CRM. And these are going to be some general settings that we can enable. The first one is recurring revenue. So if you have recurring revenues that you want to differentiate between um, non-recurring revenues, then you can select this box and you'll be able to set two sets of revenues, one for recurring and one for non-recurring revenues so that you can forecast accurately. We'll take a look at our non-recurring revenues today. To the right, we have leads. So when leads are enabled, then Odoo will create a separate stage or a separate uh, list view for us so that we can import or create leads. And those leads will eventually turn into opportunities. So we can di differentiate between our leads that can essentially be anything and our opportunities that are actively being worked on by our sales team. With multi-teams, we have the ability to create and segregate leads by teams. We have a rule-based assignment to the right. So when leads come into our leads pipeline, we can assign those leads automatically to different reps or different sales teams, depending on the tags or depending on any other criteria that is set on that actual lead. And we'll take a look at that. On predictive lead scoring to the left, Using our history of our closed leads, Odoo can predict the probability of how likely a lead is to close. So if we click on update probabilities here, we can set different options that we want based on historic data. The system will analyze leads based on their phone quality, their email quality, the state, language, source, country, or tags that are manually set on the leads in order to determine the likelihood of those leads closing. This is helpful. We use it internally at Odoo and it's very helpful to know the likelihood of a lead closing. This will get better as you close more deals and you have more history to look at in order to determine the quality of a lead based on those tags or email quality, etc. Going down here, we have lead enrichment. This allows us to pull data about a specific lead into our chatter of our system. So we'll take a look at that as well. So we'll be able to enrich leads so that we have more information about those leads. To the right here, we have lead mining, which is a tool just to allow you to generate leads if you want to based on industry, country, size, and specific criteria. Down below, we can create visits to leads if you're using the website module. Moving on from there, let's go into sales teams. Here's where we can create all of our different sales teams. We have two sales teams created right now. One is sales and one is pre-sales. Let's click into sales here. When we click into our sales teams, we'll see the name of the sales team or sales team. We have whether or not they have a, uh, a pipeline. So check this box to manage a pre-sales process with opportunities. If we check the leads box, we'll be able to uh, filter and qualify incoming requests as leads before converting them into opportunities and assigning them to a salesperson. So using that leads pipeline that I've talked about earlier. Then down below, we'll set some generic information such as a team leader. So we can set myself as a team leader. We have an email alias. So email uh, aliases will allow uh, leads to be created based on an email coming into this email alias. So we can use this email alias on our website. If we're using an Odoo website, then we can automatically create leads right from a contact form or offsite you, you can use this email alias to also create leads based on customer communication or inquiries. 
We can accept emails from everyone or we can narrow that down as well. And that's going to be within our, for each of our opportunities. Our invoicing target here, we set as $250,000 a month, and you can adjust that as needed. And the system will take all of our invoices that have been registered as paid to determine our invoicing uh, target and where we met, or if we met our goal rather. To the right is where we can set the lead assignment and all of the different domains that we want to set in order to determine which leads go to which sales team. We can determine if we want to auto assign or skip auto assignment and have them manually assigned. If we go to edit this domain here, we can look for specific tags or any other information that's on the lead to determine which sales team it goes to. So if I trash this and add a new uh, domain, let's say that we want to make sure that anything for country United States comes to our sales team. So we can separate our sales teams by geographic location or any tags that might be set on a lead. So maybe that employee count we add to the count and any uh, employee count, let's say 250 over in employee size goes to a specific sales team. So we'll confer confirm that and you can narrow that down as needed. Down below we have our sales team members and if we click into one of these, you can see how many leads they received so far this month and also set a maximum number of leads that they should get. And here we can further filter out the specific domain for that individual. So if I remove this, they'll have an open assignment, but if we filter this down, we can add specific domains such as the country equals United States as we did earlier. Of course, you can add multiple rules as you can earlier as well. So let's save that and we'll save our sales team. So you can do the same for different sales teams. Moving on from there, we'll look at activity types. Activities are going to be used to manage the things you need to do on your opportunities. Now, the system comes with a ton of default activities and we're gonna deep dive into this because it's one of the most important parts of the CRM. But keep in mind, you can create new activity types if needed. The vast majority of the time it may not be, but let's just click into one of these. If we look at uh, email here, we see the action that's to be done. So uh, for uploading a document, you'll select uploading a document for phone calls or meetings, and each one of these will trigger something different in the system. For example, if you set a request signature, it's going to ask you to select a document to request a signature, whereas if you schedule a meeting, it's going to open your calendar, and none is just going to allow you to create that activity on the fly without having to do any of this extra stuff. Dashboard visibility, we have own activities, all activities are or none, so depending on what we set here, it's going to either show or it's gonna set the visibility of where it shows. So if we hover over the dashboard visibility, we'll see whether this type of activity should be displayed on odoo.com dashboard. None, never display this activity. Own activities, which means users will see only their own activities of this type on their dashboard or all activities. User will be able to see all activities on this type on their dashboard, whatever their owner. So whoever their owner is, you'll be able to see all of activities. Depending on your organization, you might wanna have these as all activities or own activities. You can set a default user for this activity, a default summary, a default note, and then we can suggest a next activity based on the finishing of this activity. Now this might not make complete sense to you, but we'll, we'll take a look at using these activities and this will all become very clear. Next we have our pipeline, um, or pipeline settings, so we can create specific tags that we want to use throughout our opportunity. So if we want to tag those opportunities with specific tags, that way we can report on them later and easily search by them. We can do that and we can create tags on the fly as well. But these are going to be primarily used for sorting, searching, and reporting on your opportunities. Next we have our lost reasons. So if you have specific reasons why a customer is not moving forward with you and we mark an opportunity as lost, we'd want to set a lost reason so that we can use that in reporting later on. For example, if the 
if the product is too expensive, we would want to know that we're losing a lot of opportunities based on our pricing, etc. Then finally, we have lead mining requests, which will allow us to create new requests for leads based on specific criteria. We'll take a look at that a little bit later. We have some reporting that we'll look at at the end. And now we can click into our leads pipe. And here we have a list view of all of our leads. So now our leads can, can essentially be anything we want, right? So anytime a, somebody contacts us or if we purchase a list of leads that we want to upload in the system, maybe we have an SDR that's going through these leads, calling them and marking them as a specific um, or marking them once they are ready to be spoken to by a sales rep or an account executive. We'll be able to create all of our leads in here, assign them to someone to work on, or these can just automatically be created as opportunities as they come in. So if you have a list of qualified leads and you want to import them into our leads section here and have the system take over based on certain criteria and assign them to individuals, that can happen as well. So here you see leads come in, we have the email, the city, the country, and the system has automatically assigned certain individuals to them based on some of the criteria that we had set earlier on. So let's look at this lead here. This lead has some basic information that we're going to collect. It's going to be very similar to what we're going to collect on the opportunity. But basically we have a probability that the system calculated for closing this lead, the title of the lead, the company, the address, the contact name, the contact email address, if they have a job position, a phone number, a mobile number, the priority of this lead, the tags that we associated with this lead again. So if we had someone calling these leads or they came in hot, we can mark them with tags so that the system can then use those tags to assign them to the proper sales rep. We can write any internal notes. So if we had a phone call with them and we want to write our notes here, we can do so as well. And then on other under extra information, we can set all of our marketing information, such as the campaign this might be awarded to or uh, where we received this lead from or where it was located, the source of the lead, and all of these can be edited and created as needed. We can also set a referred by if someone referred this lead. So all of this is to say we can manage our leads separate from our opportunities if necessary. The system can then generate or auto assign them to specific sales reps based on tags and eventually convert them automatically to an opportunity. Here we can convert this manually to an opportunity if we'd like. So we can convert to opportunity and we're going to assign it to a salesperson, which is going to be Kevin Zaki. The sales team is sales. And here we can either convert it to a new opportunity, merge it with an existing opportunity if a similar one is found based on the email address or um, the contact information. And then here we can link it to an existing customer, not link it to a customer at all, or create a new customer, which will create a contact in our contacts module that we can utilize throughout the system. So let's go ahead and click create opportunity. So now that becomes an opportunity in Kevin Zaki's pipeline, and he'll be able to see this opportunity pricing for 25 decks. Now that is our leads. And one thing I want to mention here and uh, throughout the demonstration is that we do have default access rights that we can set so that individuals can only see leads that are assigned to them or opportunities that are assigned to them. So let's quickly go to our settings. We'll look at manage users. We'll go into admin here. And under our sales here, so this is going to be for CRM and sales, we can say user all documents or user own documents only. And that way they'll only be able to see documents that are related to them. Now going back, let's go into CRM. Now let's take a deep dive into our actual pipeline. So as I mentioned earlier, when we click into our CRM module, so if we go back to the homepage and click into CRM, we're going to see our pipeline with all of our opportunities and we see the pricing for 25 decks has come over to our pipeline. We have each one of our pipeline stages and each of these stages can be edited or created on the fly. Granted, you have access rights to do so. So if we click on stage here, let's just say this is a new stage, just for an example, we can add that new stage and drag and drop it where it belongs. And now it becomes a new stage in our pipeline. 
If we click onto the settings button here, we can edit and we can select whether it's a one stage, which is going to be useful for reporting, whether we want it to be folded in our view. So let's just select that. We can apply it to a specific sales team. So we can have a generic pipeline for all of our sales teams, or we can specify the different pipeline stages for a specific team. Now under here, we can write requirements. So if our sales team ever needs to wonder or ever needs to know when they should move an opportunity to this stage, we can write their requirements in right here. Now, as you see, we mark this as uh, folded. So it's folded, we can click it to unfold and then we can fold it again. Now at the top of the page on the right, we're going to see our different views. Right now we're in our Kanban view, but we can view this in a list view if we'd like. We can look at a calendar view. We can look at a pivot table view, which is going to be useful for reporting. Some default graph views. So we see our pipeline separated by the stages and how many opportunities we have in each stage. And we'll take a look a little bit later at that. But we can also see our opportunities in a map view. So if we want to see a geographical view of where our opportunities are located. And then finally, we have our activities view that shows us all the different activities that we need to complete for our different opportunities. Now we'll take a look at some of the more important ones in more detail later on. But let's go back to that Kanban view and see how we're going to use our CRM on a day-to-day -day basis. So here we have our new stage qualified proposition and one. Let me just move that here. We won't, we won't use this. I'll just delete it. Now, the first thing I want to pay attention to here is this bar. So we have green, yellow, and red, and these represent the activities that we need to complete for each of our opportunities. So if we click into our, our, our opportunities or our pipeline rather, and we select one of these, it's going to narrow down our Kanban view to only those opportunities that fit this section. So let's say we have two planned activities. Those are ones that are planned in the future and you can see that they have little icons that are in green. One is an email and one is a phone call. If we click on yellow, these are the ones that are due today and we can click on that and easily mark this as done if needed but typically we'd probably do that inside of the opportunity. But if we wanted to make a quick phone call and we wanted to mark it as done, we can say done and we can schedule a next activity and say it's going to be an email follow-up. And I can schedule that out for let's say tomorrow and I can schedule. So now I can uncheck that. We can look at overdue activities and those are gonna be in red. And if we click on that, we'll see that this is two days overdue. So a sales manager can look quickly at activities that are overdue or even opportunities that do not have any activities. So if you see something in gray here, those are opportunities that have no activity and they should be followed up on, perhaps. Now you'll also see to the right of that a total, which is a number, and that's going to be the total revenue that we should generate from that opportunity based on what our sales rep has entered. So here you'll see 79,000, which is 4,500, 9,000, 5,600, and 60,000 all added up to give you that 7,900. On each one of these cards, you'll notice that we have the name, the, the value of the opportunity, the customer, any tags that we set. Then we have the, per, uh, the priority of the lead or the opportunity rather, and the highest priority are going to be at the top here. So if I mark info about services as a three star, and once we soft refresh that page, we'll see that it moves up to the top. And then of course, the person that's assigned to this. If I click on the assigned person, we can easily message them right from our list view here, or right from our chatter right here. Now, because we have this filter at the top with my pipeline, it's only showing my leads. If I remove this, I'm gonna see all leads. So here we see a lead from Mark Demo, but I'll filter that back down to my pipeline. Again, depending on the access rights, you'll only be able to see what you need to see. So now let's click into one of these opportunities. We have pricing for 25 decks. You'll notice that all that information carried over from our um, lead. We have the customer that we created, the email, the phone number, 
and then un under extra information, we have all that information that carried over from our lead. So it's the same information, you can manage it the same way. Down below under tracking, we'll have the days to assign. So how many days it took to assign this lead to a sales rep and how many days this took to close. And again, this is going to be very important for our reporting purposes. Now we can set an expected revenue here. So maybe this was going to be 2,500 or 25,000. Let's leave that. We can write in any internal notes that we might need to track. And if we use a backslash here, we'll see that we can use a bulleted list, numbered list, quotes, create columns, headers, insert images, anything that we need in order to track and keep proper notes for our opportunity. Now, the biggest thing we're going to use is to the right, which is the chatter. Now, the chatter is going to allow us to send messages to this customer, log internal notes for ourselves or other employees, as well as schedule activities. So I have no activity scheduled. So let's start with creating an activity, which will say call and we'll say um, initial phone screening. Now we've seen earlier where we can have a due date. So the default due date for our activity, which is two days from the day that we're creating it. And that's the default, but of course we can adjust it as needed. The default assignee, which is going to be myself unless otherwise stated. And then we can put notes in our activity just to remind us what we need to do. So we'll just say call John Miller. Now we can open our calendar to set a specific time that we're gonna do this. So if I open my calendar here, I can set the specific time. So maybe I'm gonna do it here and I can save and close that and just made a mistake on that spelling. So let's just adjust that and save. So this is just a meeting invite. So generally this would be used for meetings um, and this can sync with your Google or Outlook calendar as needed. So all of your opportunities, leads, and any activities that you create that utilize the calendar will carry over to either Outlook or Google. So now I'm gonna go back to our opportunity here and you see in the chatter we have a planned activities for two days from now. The next thing we can do if we wanted to is send a message. So we can send a message over to John Miller via email and we can say, hey, looking forward to chatting. Now, right now this is coming from our email that we have set, or this is going to be sent from our email set for our environment, but we can adjust our domains to be an internal domain or create an outgoing email server if you have one that you want to utilize instead of the default one. So here I can click send message, or I can pop this open to fine tune our message or even load an email template. So these email templates can be used to create default responses and information that we're going to send to clients. And we can reuse those as needed with dynamic placeholders. I have other videos demonstrating email templates. So I'm not gonna go into that too much right now, uh, but just know that you can create these email templates and utilize them for each of your sales reps. If we create a new one on the fly, we can save that as a template and then it will be available to use by other individuals. We can send this off and you'll see in the chatter, our email is going to be sent out to them. We still have one planned activity and we'll see our planned activity here. And one thing to note, if you click this little icon, it'll tell us the activity type, when it was created, who it was assigned to, and the due date. So it gives you a quick summary of that opportunity or rather of that activity. Now, if we need to log internal notes, we can log notes here and any of our notes will carry over or um, carry into our chatter. And we can also log notes to tag other individuals. So if I wanted to tag, let's say our admin, check this, we can log a note here and they'll be notified that they have something to look at inside of their activities bar. So now let's go back to our pipeline. Once we have a phone call with them, maybe we want to move them to qualified. So we can simply drag and drop or inside of the opportunity, we can move them across the pipeline by clicking any of these buttons, such as proposition here. And once we go back to our pipeline, we'll now see that inside of our proposition stage. One thing to note is that all of the activities that we create are going to be available for us to view in our activities bar. You see that we have one late activity to complete in our leads or opportunities, zero due today, and we have 11 due in the future.
So if I click on that, it's going to bring me to a list view of all of our opportunities that we need or all of our activities that we need to complete. You can also view that by going to sales, my activities, and you can see a, a, a complete view of all the activities that you need to do for that day within the CRM module. Now for managers and team leads, we can remove this filter and have some default filters for their entire team so they can see all the activities that their reps need to complete. This is especially helpful if someone is out and you need to make sure that nothing pressing is upcoming for um, any of their opportunities. From here, I can look at all the extra fields that I might want to look at, such as the salesperson, the sales team, the, uh, the deadline. And we see a deadline that's two days ago. So maybe we want to snooze this and do it in seven days from now. Maybe we want to complete the activity. Uh, in any case, we can see all of our activities listed here. We can then group this or filter it. Maybe we want to group it by sales team and then salesperson. And we'll be able to see each one of our opportunities filtered and grouped by how we want to see them. Or each one of our activities, rather. So now let's go back to my pipeline. All right, so let's create a new opportunity here. Now, if we have the contacts information, we can create a new contact or we can just write in the name. So here I want to test the enrichment functionality. So let's think of a company. Uh, let's just do Tesla. So let's just do a email with Tesla domain and we'll add that. Now, if I click into this opportunity and click enrich, it should pull in some information about Tesla. Sometimes it works. Sometimes there's no information to be pulled. So let's give it a test here. And here we used one of our credits to pull in and enrich this lead. So here you have some information that's pulled uh, with the company information, founded sectors, employees, the estimated revenue, technologies used, Twitter, and other social medias at the top. And you'll see that phone number was automatically added and then their address and any information that can be pulled from this enrichment is added here. So that's how enrichment works. Now, at the same time, we can use this to auto-populate contact information. So maybe I search Google here and we can just add the company that's here. So let's say maybe just Google here. Now this can create a new opportunity with all the information automatically filled out. Uh, helpful sometimes if uh, you can find the company that you're looking for. But we'll just discard that for now. So now the next thing I want to look at is uh, our creating quotations from our leads or opportunities. So here we'll look at pricing for 25 decks. Right from our opportunity here, we can create a new quotation. So if I click on quotations here, and the point of this video is not to go through quotations, but just to quickly show you all of the contact information carries over. Under other information here, we have all the tracking that carries over to our sales orders. Uh, the sales rep, the sales team, any tags that were set on this. So all that information carries over to sales automatically so that we can actually report on this information and view all the tracking and make sure that our campaigns are working. Now, if I just add a generic product here and we'll just set the amount, I'll save that and I'm going to use the breadcrumbs at the top to go back to our opportunity and we'll see new uh, one quotation is created for this opportunity. Now they can either accept that quote, we can send it out, etc. Uh, but let's just look at what happens when we mark this as one. That moves over automatically to the one column and it's tagged with one. Now if I look at our pipeline, we'll now see that in the one column. Now if we have this need for 20 des desks here, we can mark this as lost as well. And then it's going to ask us for a loss reason that we pre-configured, let's say too expensive. We can write some closing notes if we want to and we can mark that as lost. Now what happens to lost leads is that it gets archived, so you no longer see it. And if we wanted to, we can look at our archived leads. And we'll see this need for 20 desks that was lost. We can also view that by going to lost leads. And the powerful thing about it being lost and staying in that pipeline stage is that we can filter and see exactly where these opportunities were lost. So we'll know exactly what stage these opportunities were lost in. Now let's remove our filter here and let's just go back to my pipeline. 
So what we've looked at so far is utilizing our pipeline, looking at our activities and managing our, our activities, how our managers can come in and look at which activities need to be completed. Uh, we took a quick look at filtering and sorting. We looked at the different views. We looked at creating sales teams, having leads that automatically get assigned uh, based on some tags that are on that opportunity or any other properties. The next thing I wanna look at is our reporting. So let's first go into forecast. Now this forecast report is going to filter our leads by their closing date. So here we have ones that don't have a closing date set. Here we have it set for July, 2023. And if we click into any, any of these, we'll see the expected closing date here that was set by our sales rep. So we can quickly come in here and look at which deals we are going to see and when they should be closing. Now a more helpful view might be our graph or pivot table. So if I go into my graph view here, we can look at the revenue, so we can say expected revenue, and we have the expected revenue by month based on our deadlines as well as um, the revenue that was set on the opportunity. We Right now we have it filtered by my pipeline, but maybe we want to filter this um, by sales team, so we'll group this by sales team. And we can see a bar chart here, and the revenue that expected to be brought in by each sales team based on the closing month and the revenue that was set as the expected revenue for that opportunity. If you like any of these, you can always insert this into your dashboard or insert this into a spreadsheet. But if we look at our pivot table view, we can view that same information. Here we have the sales team with the month and each stage in the pipeline that um, these opportunities are in. So let's filter this a little bit more. Let's go ahead and say we want to see the salesperson and we want to see the expected revenue and we want to, let's say, group this by closing month. So expected closing month and we'll say, let's just do month and we'll pop this open. So we have all of the things that we want to see. Now we can download this information to an XLX file or rather an XLSX file. We can flip the axis. We can expand all groups if they weren't already expanded. We can view other information here. And we can insert this into an Odoo Sheets and manipulate that data right inside of Odoo Sheets. We won't do that right now, but just keep in mind that you can do that. The next reporting feature I wanna look at is our pipeline. So maybe we wanna see the number. So we have a count here, the number of opportunities. And this is grouped by date. Let's remove that date. So we have all of our opportunities here. Maybe we want to group this by, um, well, I guess this is good right here. Whoops. We have the month that they were created. Maybe we don't care about that. We can remove that. Uh, whatever we want, however we want to manipulate this information so that we view the graph that we want to see. And again, you can see that in the pivot table view. We can change this to a line graph. Now let's say that we wanted to see my pipeline and I wanted to see our opportunities. Actually, let me take away my pipeline and we'll group this by sales team. And let's go back to our pie chart or let's go to a pie chart. Now we see all the opportunities split between the team. So we'll see that our sales team has 11 opportunities and our pre-sale team has eight opportunities. We can also change this to maybe expected revenue. Let's see the revenue breakdown. Maybe we want to see only one leads. So we'll filter this by one leads. And now we can see how much revenue each of our teams brought in. And then we can further filter that. Maybe we want to do it by month. So close date, we can do it, let's say month. So here we only have one month, which is July, 2023. But you can see the power of manipulating this data. You have all the data you need to manipulate as you see fit, and then you can export this data or insert it into a spreadsheet at any time. We can do the same thing for leads, and we can look at activities. So this is another really helpful tool because we can then, uh, for under activities here, we can look at completed activities. And if we wanted to, we can say, look at, let's say, for example, we want to look at the one opportunities and we want to see how many of each activity types were completed for our one activities. We can do that right through here. 
And we can also look at and um, analyze all the activities that were completed by our sales reps to make sure they're meeting some KPIs that we might have set for them, or they're just make, making sure that they're doing uh, their due diligence and following up with their reps as needed or following up with their opportunities as needed. Now, just to summarize things here, we see how intuitive this is to use. Um, we have our different pipelines. We have all of our opportunities here. We can create leads that get converted right into opportunities based on some criteria. We can filter what we need to see. We can set default access rights to limit the view. We can enrich our leads for more information about the company. We can easily move them across the pipeline, and then we can create quotes for our opportunities right from within the CRM. Now, the last thing I do want to show that we might have missed is the ability to schedule activities for different activity types. So a couple of the really interesting ones is going to be a signature request or an upload document. So you can request that the individual uploads a document, which will live right in the chatter, or you can request a signature here. So here I'm going to request a signature. I can schedule that. And here it's going to schedule an activity. And once I click on request signature here, I can select what I want them to sign. So maybe they need to sign this non-disclosure agreement. We can set the customer who's going to sign this because we don't have one. Say this is Gemini Furniture. And I can send this out to them. Now they're going to get a request to sign the document through their email. And that request is going to exist in our sign module. So if I go to our uh, Let's go to our documents here, my requests. We see this non-disclosure -dis agreement that we sent to Gemini Furniture is yet to be signed. If we click into that, we'll see that they need to fill it out, fill out their initials and sign it. And that's based on sign templates that we created. So that is that non-disclosure agreement here. If we went to modify template, we'll look at, we created the name, the customer, and all of their information that they need to fill in uh, using the sign module. And this is going to be useful for non-disclosure agreements or any other documents that you need your opportunities to sign during that initial discussion. So that's all I wanted to show for today. I hope you got a good understanding of the CRM module and how powerful it is, how uh, you can use the reporting tools to pretty much get any of the reporting KPIs that you might need, um, as well as just analyze the data that you have in your pipeline to forecast appropriately, to allocate resources as needed, and then to evenly distribute your opportunities, as well as reward your top performers, or even look at all of your individuals and the revenue that they brought in so that you can pay them out their commission.